In this video, we will work through some examples of static void methods in C-sharp. Void methods do not return a value. So even though the method does not return a value, we still need to declare a return type for the method. For the syntax, the syntax requires a return type to be defined. Um, a typical static void method might do work such as printing information to the console, like printing a menu or printing a message, printing an error. A void method does not require a return statement, but you can include the return statement in a void method. So for example, here I have an, a void method that its job is to just print the string of, of text hello. So the method is declared as a static method the static method means I call it by just typing its name. It is a void method because this method is printing data to the console, but it isn't returning a value back to the calling method. And then the name of the method is print hello. The execution, the statements that actually do the work, are included in the body of the method. And here I'm just calling the console.writeLine method, passing the string value inside it, and then we have our return statement. When we get to the return statement, we exit the method and return back to wherever we were called. Now I have another example of a static void method called print hello also. The work of this method is just to print the string of text hello also. But in this case, I do not have a return statement. I did not include a return statement. Well, because this method does not return a value, then the return statement is implied when you get to the end of the method body code block. So how do we call a static void method? Well, calling the, a static void method, you just type its name. So you need to know the namespace and the class from which the method was created. And then you could access that method by calling the namespace name dot class name dot method name. Let's work through a couple of examples together. Here I have my 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 main method defined in my program class inside my video examples namespace. And if we look at the main method here, the main method is a static void method. This method does not return anything when it is done. When we get to the end of the code block, we just exit the program. We, we are done. But I could include a return statement in my main. If I put return here, that would be fine. But typically in C -sharp, the return statement is just implied in a static void method. So all right, let's create our own methods here. When we create a new method, I'm going to create our method syntax outside of other method syntaxes, but inside some class. So here is my class code block defined. I'm going to create my new methods inside the class code block, but outside of other method code blocks. So for our for our first method, we are going to create a method that just prints a menu of options. Now, when you do a menu type of printout, usually uh, menus might consist of several right line statements. So we have a we have a bit of work here that that encompasses several statements. And if I wanted to do that work again and again, I can maybe save myself some time by putting that work inside a method. So this method is going to be a static method. We're going to call it by just typing its name. This method is printing values to the console, but it isn't returning anything to the, the method who calls it. So the return type here can be void. Uh, the, then we need to give our method a name. In C Sharp, the convention for method names is uh, name the method after an action, make it an action sounding word, and capitalize the first letter in the, the name. So since we are, this method is printing a menu of options, I might name this method print options. And I need to attach my pair of parentheses which define any input parameters I may require. In this case, because I'm just printing a menu, I don't need any additional information to do that work. So I don't need any input parameters here. Now let's implement the work. Maybe we will print a menu that says something like console.writeLine, uh, please choose an option. And then maybe we will list some options, console.writeLine, how about S for small, M for medium, and L for large. 
And then maybe we will make a little caret here that allows some prompt text to be shown. So this method is just printing some text, but it's pr printing a couple lines of text. Now, when I'm done, I could add a return statement, but you can see there is no syntax errors if I do not if I leave it off. Because this is a void method, we aren't returning a value. The return is implied at the end of the method body code block. But in, in this example, I will go ahead and insert my return statement. All right. Let's look at how we can call this method. In main, I want to use this other method. So I could type the namespace, videos examples, class program, and then the method name. So this is the formal way to call a static method. I'm going to call the method from the class from the namespace in which it was declared. Now because this method, we are calling a method that just happens to exist in the same class and the same namespace as the method that is calling it, then you can see how the namespace name and class name have been kind of um, faded out a little bit. That's because it is not required to type the namespace and class if you are calling a method from the same namespace and class you are working in. So here I'm going to call my print options method. When I call in main, when I call this method, I'm going to pause execution on line 10 and jump to wherever this method was declared, which here it happens to be line 17. And then I'm going to start executing statements in the method until I get to the return. Once I get to the return, I'm going to jump back to our main method and then start executing statements in main again. All right, after we print our menu, why don't we read in a choice? I'm going to say string choice is equal to console.readline, and then we will print the choice. Console.writeline, you chose, and we will figure out, echo back which choice was selected. Let's try it out. So when we run our program, even though main is not printing out the menu items explicitly, it is calling a method that has the logic to print those three statements. And so we've simplified the work in main by, by putting the work inside another method. So if I enter in a value like m, we can read in that we chose m. All right, let's build another method. In our next example, I want to create a method that takes a string name value as an input parameter and prints a statement saying hello to that name. So again, here is a method that the work is just printing a value to the console. It's not returning a value back to the calling method. So let's build this method. We're going to start with the, key, the access modifier static. Static means to call this method, I just want to be able to type its name. The return type is going to be void because we are just printing values. We aren't returning values. And then I'm going to give this, this method a name. How about print hello? Now in the case of this print hello method, its work is to try to say hello to some string name value. But it doesn't know what the name value is going to be yet. So I need to create an input parameter for this method to allow the outside world to pass in a name value. Name values are typically strings, and then I'm going to give this variable a name. So string name. By declaring this input parameter, I've specified that to use, in order to use this print hello method, whoever calls this method must also provide a string value that we can work with. Now inside this method body, I'm going to implement the work that does that prints hello to the name. So I'm going to say console.writeline, and we will create a string that says hello placeholder and insert the name value. Now in this method, I have no idea what value is going to be coming in. But in order to use this method, the outside world must provide a string value. If they provide me a string value, then I can print that string value in my output string. In this case, I'm going to leave off the return statement. Because it is a void method, the return statement is implied when we get to the end of the code block. So let's call this method. Well, the print hello method is declared, is, is defined in the same class that we are working. So I can just type the method name without including the namespace or the class name portion. 
So I can say print hello to the name Anna, and then I could say print hello to the name Omar. I'm reusing the code in this method. I'm calling the method multiple times, and each time I call it, I'm passing a, a different value. So after we get past our prompt, I'm going to say hello to o Anna and say hello to Omar. Okay. Now if I tried to just call the method without passing a string value, I'm going to have a problem here. I get a, a syntax error. And that syntax error says there is no argument given that corresponds to the required formal pr input parameter name. So we need a string value. And if, we, if you look when I hover over our method, we can see that it returns type void. So this method does not return anything. And it requires a string input parameter. We have to pass a string value in order to use this method. So I will re-include the string value. When I call my print hello method for the first time, this string value Anna is going to be stored into the string name variable. And it's going to be stored long enough for us to work with it inside the method. And we will print that value. When we are done, that string value, the string name variable goes away. We're done with it. The method is complete. When I call the method again, I'm going to pass a new string value into the method. This, this string value Omar is going to be stored into the string name variable. And then, we can, and then we can work with it. So we will print, insert that value into our output statement, and we're done. All right, let's do one more. Create a method that takes two integer values as inputs, and the method will print to the console the sum of those two values. So let's see if we can make that happen. Again, the work of this method is printing values to the console, not returning a result. So this return type for this method can be void. So I'm going to define this method as static because I want to be able to use this method by just calling its name. Its return type is going to be void because the result is being printed to the console. And then we will name this method something descriptive. How about print sum? Now this method requires uh, two integer values to be passed into it in order for us to calculate and print the sum. So I have to create input parameters to, in order for us to have variables ready to hold two values passed in. So maybe I will create a variable called int a and a second variable called int b. I can separate multiple input parameters by commas. And I can have as many input parameters as I want. They can be of any types required. So in order to use this, use this print sum method, the outside world is going to have to provide two integer values when they call the method. Now inside the method, let's do the work. First, I'm going to, I want to calculate the sum of these two inputs. So I need a variable to hold that. So I'm going to say int sum is equal to a plus b. I don't know what a or b are at the time, but it doesn't matter. Once I get two integer values, I can add them and save the result. Now it's time to print the result. So I will say console.writeLine, and we will say the sum is, why don't we use all the values? I will say the sum of the A value plus the B value is equal to the total. I have three placeholders here. And I will insert the A value first, the B value second, and the sum third. Now when we get to the end of the code block, we will return automatically. Because this is a void return type, that means we aren't returning a value, and the, and the return is implied when we get to the end of the code block. All right, let's call this, this method a couple times. Here I'm going to call the print sum method. And the print sum method requires two integer values. So I have to provide two integer values. Why don't we try 10 and 13 at the beginning? And I'll call the method again. This time I'll pass it 1001. And how about 1313? 13? The first time I call the print sum method, the value 10 is going to be stored into the input parameter A. The value 13 is going to be stored into the input parameter B. And now A and B have values, and I can do work with them. Likewise, when I call print sum the second time, one, the value 1001 will be passed from main, stored in A. The value 1313 will be passed from main, stored in integer B, long enough to do the work, and then 
we can print the results. So let's see this in action. Get through our menu prompt, and here we have the output of our two print sum methods, where we pass values in and we see the results. Hope this helps.